If you find the anime, Classroom of the Elite, intriguing, you'll love its original light novel version even more. That's why I'll rank all the volumes of the first school year, featuring the goaded MC himself, Ayano Koji Kiyotaka. First, know that Kinu Sensei is the author of this series, and Tomo Sensei is the illustrator. Volume 1 was released nearly 10 years ago, in 2015. Writing a school with a psychological thriller theme, mixed with a small amount of political elements and a bit of mind games, was ahead of its time. Dodging the typical rom-com trend, which was later adopted by Alia from the neighboring room in her light novel. Since the volume introduces the school elements and systems, we see students showcasing their abilities and competing between classes. Yet, we have a main character who hides his true strength and constantly narrates his desire to live an ordinary student life. Though trouble keeps finding him. He's put into a class with unique individuals like the eccentric Koenji, Kushida, who nearly blackmails Ayanokoji when he uncovers her two-faced nature, and Horikita, who's cold and stubborn but starts opening up to help Sudo's trio. Ayanokoji shows his quick thinking by buying test questions to ensure the class passes the first exam, and he buys points to help Sudo along with Horikita. The volume ends with a party at Ayano Koji's room as a conclusion. It truly is enjoyable with moments of silliness like Koji hiding in the tea room, the students betting on booba size during swimming class, and the writing being well arranged. This first volume feels like Kinu wrote it freely and boldly. In my opinion, it's a B+, almost an AW volume. Moving on to volume two, we follow an online idol who's shy in real life and is being stalked by perverts. Additionally, there's a trial to overturn Sudo's expulsion case. Honestly, this volume isn't very outstanding because I don't spend my time just watching a 16-year-old girl struggling to overcome her psychological barriers to help her classmates in times of trouble. We also get introduced to a new ally, Ichinose from Class 1B, and the antagonist at the end, Ruyen from Class 1C. Although the name Ruyen hadn't been written by the author at that time, it serves as foreshadowing for future events. The moment Koji runs to save Ari is quite hype, but those are probably the last highlights of this volume. We also learn more about Chabashira's interest in Ayano Koji and Horikita being informed about it, along with Ayano Koji's haunting past being gradually revealed. Overall, it's a volume of small moments, but as a whole, it's slow and not very good. I rate this volume a C-. Moving on to volume three, the deserted island test comes with fairly simple rules, requiring students to cooperate and survive for a week. The interesting part is the point system and identifying the leaders of other classes. Before the test, Chabashira threatened Ayano Koji, demanding that he display his true abilities to help Class D reach Class A, or she would agree to his father's demands to get him expelled. The Greek mythology statue of Icarus is also referenced. With limited time, Ayano Koji is forced to actively participate in this test. Ruyen, a strategic leader, is introduced. He pretends to cooperate with Class A while plotting betrayal with a double agent, Hashimoto, within Class A. He sends spies to Classes C and D, pretending that his class gave up the test by boarding the ship while he stays hidden in the forest. Ayanokoji catches on and uses Horikita and Ibuki to counterattack and deceive Ruyen. He breaks Ibuki's camera at night, forcing her to carry the evidence. The reasoning here is intense. Ibuki and Horikita fight, and Horikita realizes she can't do everything alone and needs her friends. On this deserted island, Ike stands out as a reliable student. The story highlights everyone's strengths and weaknesses. Anokoji's skewed perception of people is his weakness. He must pass this test for his benefit. As he doesn't want to leave the school just yet, he wants to learn more about society. When rescuing Horikita during a downpour, he gets frustrated with her persistence that hinders his plan. To succeed, he knocks her unconscious and explains he has never considered anyone a friend or ally everyone is a tool for his ultimate victory. Class D wins first place as planned. Ayano Koji gives all the credit to Horikita through Hirata because he wants to stay unnoticed and observe the school. The volume concludes with Ayano Koji explaining his plan to Horikita like friends until she agrees. Volume three is exceptional compared to other light novels of its time. The anime adaptation also portrays this arc where Koji might seem like an edgy lord but the light novel effectively explains his actions through the symbol of freedom for Ayano Koji over the first three volumes. Easily an A to A plus volume, in my opinion. Moving on to volume four, without a doubt, ranking S. The Test, a werewolf-style game, never gets boring. The dynamic between Ayano Koji and Hirata is simply fantastic. Hirata's recounting of his past as a coward who couldn't protect his friend is convincingly why he agrees to protect Kei, but doesn't want to hurt others out of Kei's selfish desires. The psychological and manipulative elements displayed by Ayanokoji are outstanding. Remember the underground bomb shelter scene? 
Ayano Koji uses an unknown number to text Manabe's group about why he hates Kei, convincing readers in a perfectly logical way. At Kei's most desperate moment, Ayano Koji offers her an escape route to cooperate and become his ally. He's more capable of protecting Kei than Hirata. Ayano Koji also subtly glances at YouTube friend and family won't let me say when he sees Ichinose sleeping alone in her room. Ichinose devises a strategy to expose the VIP, and Koji's plan to mislead the true VIP succeeds. But guess what? Ichinose figures it out too and plans to win, only for a traitor to send a wrong guess message about the VIP, making Koji's plan succeed. Additionally, Ruyin redeems himself with his strategy that brings victory to Class C. This volume is superbly written from start to finish and is my favorite in the series. Volume 4.5 is a more mundane volume where we witness Horikita Suzune becoming a bottle water victim and getting stuck in an elevator with Ibuki after a hilarious fortune-telling session. Helping Katsuragi send stuff wasn't that funny, but Yamagod confessing to Ahri gave me hope for his character development. Though, later, I knew it was in vain. First collaboration after the ship test between Ayano Koji and Kei, countering the boy's desires with a strategy to install cameras through a remote-controlled device in the ventilation duct, a beautiful conclusion for the first 0.5 volume. I'd rank this volume a B. Continuing with volume 5, this one might spark some debate in the comments, but I have to say it, S plus volume. The explanation of the test rules might be a bit dull, but it gets so much better. Nagumo is introduced as a top contender for the student council president role after Manabu's term ends. Nokoji is hilariously tricked by Sudo because he doesn't know the average grip strength of a high school boy. The entire sports festival unfolds under Ruyen's plan, where Ruyen plays dirty by putting hair wax all over his headband so no one can pull it off, resulting in his loss. Horikita is useless when Sudo, the class's key player, leaves in anger after Ruyen's dirty play, and Ayano Koji scolds her for the first time. How long do you plan to be useless? Sudo is an important tool you can control, and now you're just sitting here doing nothing, dreaming about reaching Class A. Despite being annoyed by Ayano Koji's harsh words, Horikita eventually talks to Sudo after her unsettling encounter with her brother, Manabu, and a threat from Ruyen, who secretly collaborates with Kushida. Initially, Horikita speaks to Sudo as if she's above him, but later she understands they are alike with their flaws and need each other's support. Although they're late for the sports festival, they make it just in time for the final endurance run, brilliantly written. Then, Ayano Koji executes his plan to divert Ruyen's attention from Class D's real mastermind. Description of Ayano Koji and Mananabu running at their fastest for the first time in his life is brilliant. It ends with Ayano Koji solving the threat between Ruyen and Kushida using Manabe as a spy and meeting Arisu, the Class A leader who says she will defeat him. Arisu knows about Koji's past despite his evasions. Her confident words, I'm the perfect person to bury the false genius, are met with Ayano Koji's retort, Can you bury me? Followed by a powerful monologue reaching the volume's peak conclusion. I want my destruction, my defeat, which would mean the old man would lose. I want the sad contradiction that I carry within me to be destroyed. I wished for that from the bottom of my heart. Ending volume five. Despite any debate in the comments, my rating for this volume remains S+, the best volume of the first year. Volume six, featuring the paper shuffle test and the reveal of Kushida's past, explains her hatred towards Suzune. There are a few enjoyable moments as Ayano Koji forms a new group of friends with Hasabe and Keisei. The most notable part of this volume isn't the test or Kushida's past, but the gradual buildup of Ruyin's suspicion that there's an X in Class D, controlling it. X thinks like Ruyin, uses similar strategies, and understands Ruyin eerily well by ignoring Kushida to save his Class C. I rate this volume a B, as it builds momentum for the peak volumes to come. Volume 7 is a gripping cat-and-mouse situation where Ruyin believes he's the cat-hunting X in Class D, knowing K is his final card to force X to reveal themselves. Back in Ayano Koji's day-to-day -day life, his father visits and threatens him to drop out. But Ayano Koji shows a newfound respect for his school and classmates, giving you a different perspective on him compared to his anime version. He also realizes Chabashira deceived him to serve her selfish goal of reaching Class A. Ayano Koji's only positive actions were due to Chabashira's threat in Volume 3. Now, with Kei still in trouble, he decides to act one last time. The author masterfully writes from Ruyin's perspective, showcasing his intense desire to find X. Ruyin's plan, the rooftop incident, reaches a peak comparable to the Shibuya incident, timed perfectly at the start of winter break. He texts both X and K, forcing her to appear. Ruyin continuously manipulates K psychologically, which Ishizaki and especially Ibuki dislike. The water torture scene begins, and the author depicts the dialogue between the students realistically, 
but Kay's monologue is the highlight. This event transforms Kay into one of the most beloved female characters in the Coat series. Kay, though weak and scared when bullied, is strong enough to change and make her own choices despite potential betrayal by Koji again. She's willing to be the hero and revert to her tormented middle school self, hoping the happy times with Koji aren't erased and he comes to save her. Kay, terrified of water, is repeatedly drenched in the freezing cold, with her weak spirit exploited by Ruyen to extract information, yet she doesn't give in until the end. The narrative shifts back to Koji, watching movies with the Hasabe group, making readers anxious about his next move. The payoff is worth it when Koji, with Manabu and Chabashira, threatens Ruyen's group, ensuring the rooftop incident stays hidden. Koji is revealed as the real cat in this cat and mouse game. The combat scene is detailed and satisfying, even more so in the anime adaptation of season two. The volume ends with Koji and Ruyen's group having a small talk after the defeat, with Ruyen becoming a sad boy, planning to leave the school, giving Koji an idea for his next move. Of course, Koji saves Kei, gives her his coat, and comforts her. This volume reaches the peak of the coat series, deserving an S ranking, surpassing volume four in quality. Kinu's writing in this volume is exceptional. Volume 7.5 is honestly the most enjoyable 0.5 volume of the first year. We see Koji stopping Ruyen from leaving school, a double date between Koji and Sato with Kei and Hirata, and Kei developing romantic feelings for Koji. Koji senses Kei's dependence on him, so he rejects Sato's confession, and the dynamic between Koji and Ibuki stuck together for the second time is hilarious. The author clearly enjoys involving Ibuki this way. Overall, it's very enjoyable and worth reading, earning an A ranking. Volume 8 takes us to the mixed camp training. This volume gives Nagumo more spotlight, portraying him as smart, confident, and quite cunning. Koenji also gets his moment with the memorable T-Rex showdown, a battle to be remembered. Overall, it's a decent volume, earning a B rank from me. Volume 9, Ichinose Honami Rumors. Honestly, I'd rate this one slightly lower than Volume 8, a B. While I enjoyed the beer girl Chan moment with Ayano Koji and Kei on Valentine's Day from Hashimoto's perspective, Ichinose's past isn't overly dramatic. Although stealing is wrong, Ichinose's half-year dropout and hikikomori lifestyle show her weakness, and her mother's failure to help her sooner is quite disheartening. Criticisms aside, Ayano Koji's gradual, respectful approach through the door symbolizes this volume. The author could have written it better, though. Volume 10 is where Yamagod truly lives up to the god in his name. The dynamic within the class stands out as they hold a trial against Yamaguchi for his actions, with Kushida involved. Of course, it's Ayano Koji's idea, but we see Suzune's growth and decisiveness as she steps up as a new leader, replacing a despairing Hirata during the class's judgment. The simple but effective test fosters excellent writing between classmates. When Yamagod is sent to the Black Room, there's a certain satisfaction we all feel. Ruyen's return, aided by Ibuki and Ishizaki's enthusiasm, and Ayano Koji's collaboration with Ichinose to solve their mutual problems, signal positive development. I rate this volume an A. Volume 11 dives into Ayano Koji's origins in the White Room and how Arisu's father pities the children subjected to such education from birth for the selfish gains of adults in the political and power spheres. Nokoji talks with Hirata, helping him recover slightly from Yamaguchi's loss. Honestly, the selection exam is the best test of the first year, with its setup already exciting before even reaching the climax. The author brilliantly depicts the strategic elements of this test from Sudo's substitution in volleyball, computer entries, essay writing, to quick mental math, each randomly selected student needing optimal calculation for future tests where their class's strengths may lie. Despite the anime chess match's 1000 ELO rating criticism, Coat never aimed to professionalize chess. Kinu wanted to capture the battle atmosphere from Horikita vs. Hashimoto and Ayano Koji vs. Arisu, emphasizing the need to win. Arisu's victory over the artificial genius to prove UR's failure in child training and Koji's acceptance of defeat only for Tsukishiro to admit altering Koji's moves further heightens this. Kinu's description of men transporting computer facilities showcases Koji's humility and Tsukishiro's existence as another reason for Koji to act more in the future, like Chabashira. Arisu respects Koji and acknowledges his hard-earned skills through their chess match in the library. As the sun sets, Arisu gently shows Koji the value of human warmth, something she wanted to tell him as a child, seeing him devoid of the love every child deserves. Koji is surprised by Arisu's gesture, concluding with their walk back, chatting about everyday matters. This volume is remarkable, with a segment on Ruyen versus Ichinose adding Ruyen's vibe. However, Koji versus Arisu stands out, earning an S rank. 
The writing is superb. Volume 11.5 is the perfect conclusion to the first year of the Coat series, earning the final S rank. Koji and Ichinose, they bond in the rain. With Koji convincing a depressed Ichinose after her loss to Ruyan in the final exam, promising to meet again next year. Koji and Ruyan, a small fight ends with mutual advice for the upcoming year. Koji and Arisu, after talking with her father and Chairman Sakayanagi, they alert the teachers to Tsukishiro's presence. Koji and Suzune, he helps her have a final conversation with her brother Manabu, sharing their experiences over the past year and making a bet on next year's exam. Koji and Manabu, this crucial conversation will influence Ayano Koji's remaining two years. Manabu, whom Koji respects, encourages him to use his abilities to help those around him, leaving a lasting impression and making others happy to remember him. Kinu's masterful moments continue, especially with the perspective of Matsushita, witnessing Ayano and Tsukishiro, the villain for the second year. There's also a bit of time for Shina, Ik, and Shirohara-san, keeping things interesting. Finally, Koji takes a significant step by confessing to Kei, making them officially a couple by the end of the first year. The first year of Classroom of the Elite is a near-perfect depiction of school life, showcasing various perspectives on issues, especially Ayano Koji's unique character. Whether you love or hate him, his popularity is undeniable. I get it, my rankings might not satisfy every reader, but I hope you'll appreciate this objective take. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace out.